Well met Brave Warrior types of learning stuff, information bits and all that kind of brain jazz. How is it going? Welcome to Tiger Talks where this week I'm going to be speaking down to you a little. Okay, just give me a chance to explain. A couple of weeks ago on the Facebook page I asked you guys for some suggestions for videos that you would really like to see and level 20 information mage Andy C suggested that I do a series of videos about high level concepts but instead of explaining them as high level concepts he suggested that I break them down into their constituent parts so basically make them as simple to understand as I possibly can. Explain it as though he said to me in an almost Shatnerian fashion you were speaking to a five year old. Well, while I can't guarantee that I'm going to be able to break the topics that I try and cover in this kind of video down to that level, I'm going to give it my best. Arrgh. So join with me today as you and I learn the answer to the question, why is the sky blue? Like my shirt. Key fact number one. When light waves travel through the atmosphere, they meet or interact with particles that are significantly smaller, like teeny teeny tiny compared to the light wave's wavelength. The wavelength of a light wave is the distance between one peak, up a bit, and the next peak, up a bit, in its little wave motion. Rule number two. Light waves have in them electric fields, and these electric fields move backwards and forwards. They oscillate around a key point. The electric fields also oscillate backwards and forwards at right angles to a magnetic field, which oscillates around the same key point. Combine fact one with fact two, and you get fact number three, which is that when the light waves interact with the tiny little particles in the atmosphere, the electric field of the light waves interacts with the charges of the particles, and it causes them to oscillate or move backwards and forwards at the same rate or speed as each other, so they sync up. As a direct result of fact number three, we get fact number four, which is that the light's effect on the particles and their charges causes some of the light to spread or scatter off the light ray. This actually happens a lot more than you would think. It happens in liquids and solids as well, but it's significantly more common to occur in gases, like up in the sky. When this happens up in the sky, it actually causes another effect. Another link in the chain, I guess, of why the sky is blue and, coincidentally, why the sun is yellow. It's fact number five. This whole light waves meeting tiny little particles in the atmosphere thing happens so much that two whole thirds of the light from the initial solar wave that's sent out from the sun is scattered down so that we see it on the Earth rather than the rest of it, the one third that's left over, which is just kind of left careening off into space. So I know that at the beginning of the video I said that I would be explaining why the sky is blue, and I promise that I will, but it's not just really blue, is it? I mean, during the proper day when the sun is right up there high in the sky, yeah, it's blue, it's so blue, but during the morning and the evening at sunrise and sunset, it's not blue, it's different colours, it's reds and yellows and oranges and purples and really pretty stuff. This brings us on to fact number six, which I actually covered in a video a long time ago, which is that different colors of light have different wavelengths. And fact number seven, which I didn't cover in a video a long time ago, which is that our whole tiny little particle scattering bits of light waves in the atmosphere effect tends to scatter more short wavelength light than long wavelength light. If we add fact six to fact seven, we get the fact that the sky is blue because blue light has the shortest wavelength of all visible light. And so this whole light waves being scattered apart by tiny little particles thing tends to send the blue light off the light wave down to us on Earth, meaning that's what hits our eyes, so that's what we see. And the rest of the light goes... where? Well, what actually happens is that at sunrise and sunset, we're seeing the unscattered light. We're seeing the remnants of the light from the area of the Earth where it is still sun high up in the sky daytime. Because the shorter wavelengths, the blues and the greens, have already been stripped out or scattered off the light wave, we're left with the longer wavelengths, so the reds, the yellows, the oranges, and all that kind of thing. And so there you go. That is why the sky is blue, or whatever colour it happens to be when you are looking at it. Was that simple enough? Was that too simple? Was it a bit too complicated? Was it confusing? Were you confused? Was I confusing? Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought. And if you would like to see more videos of this specific type, let me know in the comment section below what topics you would like me to simplify in the same manner that I did with this one. Bye! Subscribe to my channel, like and share the video, do these things or face eternal darkness.